I, I would like to, if you have time, to do the classic street epistemology example with me. Okay. Uh, the earth is round, the earth is flat. <laughs> do it with you? Yeah, just real quick. Oh, okay. Do you want me to have the belief or do you want you to have the belief? I think we can switch, just like you did with that person on the street. So you want, you're going to be the street epistemologist and I'm going to have the person with the belief? Okay. Is that, is that what you want? Sure. Oh, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. So I believe that the earth is flat and you're going to ask me questions about it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Diana, I believe, <laughs> quite obviously, that the earth is flat. But the earth is not flat. Science has proven to us that it's not flat. People have gone into outer space and taken pictures of the earth and it is round. It's a sphere. We've taken pictures all around it. So it is not flat. That's... Preponderance of evidence has shown us that it's not flat. As a matter of fact, one of the first ways we discovered this was when we watched ships sail off, the hull, the top part of the ship, was the last part to disappear. How are you able to believe that the Earth is flat? How... how First of all, what, how much on a scale of one to seven, how much do you believe that? <laughs> wow, you were really getting it. I, were, I love this. This is awesome. This is great. Um, on a scale from one to seven, it's uh, obviously, it's a seven. Okay. Um, quite obviously. Yeah, okay. Well, based upon what I just said, how do you, how do you reconcile that information? Well... Deanna, you can throw all the science, sciencey stuff you want at me. That's not why I believe it. Okay. Because I've seen science being used all sorts of ways. I've seen science be used to, you know, make things seem true when they're not true. And I've seen science do bad things in the world. And I've seen science be wrong. I've seen science be wrong all the time. They get things wrong and, you know, they said this and now they're saying this. And so I don't trust science. And that's not why I believe the belief. So I'm Terry and I'm sitting here saying... To you, but if science has shown us this now, you're saying that science takes no part in this. That, science has no role in this. Not why I believe it. Okay. What is your belief your belief based upon that the earth is flat then? Excellent question. <laughs> that is the question. Excellent. Why do I believe it? The primary reason why I believe it is personal experience. That when I have flown in a plane really high, the world still, still looks flat to me. When I've been on a boat and I've says, sailed around, the world has sort of looked still flat to me. Um, and the people I've talked to, the world has looked flat to them too. That has been my experience. Okay. Let's switch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the earth is flat. Deanna, Mark. how do you know <laughs> that you're... Okay, on a scale from one to seven, how confident are you that your belief is true? Seven. Uh, seven. And on a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? It is very important for me to believe in true things. So it's seven very on important. both. Yes. What is the primary reason you believe your belief is true? My belief is true because that's what I've always been told. When I was growing up, I would tell my parents, well, is it the earth round? They'd say, no, 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 Deanna, the earth is flat. And they constantly gave me that message. When I <clears throat> look at pictures of the earth, I can say, well, you may say that it's a sphere or it's round, but it's flat to me. And it's also a conspiracy for people to try and make flat earthers look bad. <clears throat> okay, so you said a few things. I think you're saying yeah. some personal experience. Personal experience? That's how I was raised. And you're saying that there are people out there with nefarious motivations. Yes. Who yes. want you to believe. Who want you to believe that. 
of those two reasons, what would you say is the primary reason why you believe the belief? That, that if, people are trying to get me to believe something that I don't believe. They want you to believe that it's yes. not, that the world is round when it's flat. Yes. And so we'll say that that is your primary reason why you believe that's the belief. That's my primary reason, but I was always told the earth is flat. <clears throat> okay, but that's not the primary reason. The primary, reason, the primary reason is that primary there are people that, out there who want you to yes, believe it yes. for a nefarious reason. And, and try and use science. Who are those people, by the way, that are trying to? I can go to the internet and find numerous people that are trying, scientists are trying to make me believe it, but I can find other scientists who say the and, earth is flat. And when they want you to believe it, and they may, scientists might right. want you to believe the world is round for nefarious reasons. I completely reasons. believe they do. And when they do that, what are these nefarious? What are the reasons? What are the nefarious reasons why they are doing that? Because they're just trying to back up a claim that was given to them when they were growing up. They're trying to reinforce their belief they had growing up. So they believe it. Yes. And because of they believe it for basic, for apparently no good reason, but yes. doesn't matter. They want you to believe it. Yes. Listen, Mark. There, there's evidence out there that the Earth is flat that they are ignoring. They're simply ignoring it. You're not hearing it because you just are looking for confirmation that the earth is round. Okay, now you're talking about scientific reasons. So I'm, I really want to understand why you believe the belief, and this is important, <laughs> because you can believe a belief for different reasons. Yes. You can believe the earth is <clears throat> flat because of personal experience. You can believe the earth is flat because of science. Your understanding of it. I can find scientists who will tell and, you. Or scientists. Scientists. And then yeah. you could believe the world is flat because of a conspiracy to yes. say the world is not round. Yeah. And I really am trying to get to the nature of your belief, of why you believe it. Those are the reasons that I believe it. It was is what my a, parents always told me. And I have discovered information out there that the earth really is flat. There's a whole wealth of information that you, you have not looked at. Personal experience, yes. and there's scientific reasons. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I'm really trying to. I know. <laughs> we don't have to spend right. a lot of time. No, but this on is this good. Other. This is a really good because this <laughs> yeah. is this is how I'm this just, is. You're doing a great job. This yeah. is how it works. Yeah. And from from a street epistemological perspective, as a street epistemologist, <laughs> what I really want to do is I'm really in, and they may be all co-equal reasons, but typically. People have one reason that's higher than maybe another reason. Yes. And then I really try to understand that reason because, and the reason why is, is if someone gives you eight reasons, well, you can go to this reason and then the person will switch to, well, yeah, there's another co-equal reason and then there's another co-equal reason and there's another co-equal reason. <laughs> and then we're really not, then, then, then it's, then we're, we're not talking about what is, um, we have no opportunity to talk right. about what's true and real right. because we're reason switching. Right. Exactly. And, and that's, and that's could be fair if someone has eight co co equal reasons of why they believe a belief and we, it would just potentially take a long time to get through it because we need to go through reason by reason by reason that, and look, if there is a disconfirming reason f for that reason or that reason and finally maybe get somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think the point that I wanted to make was you can't separate the reason from your sensations. And it's my sensation always will come into it. And I was raised that the earth was so you're saying it, flat. You're saying people feel it strongly. People feel it strongly. Yes. And people have a history yes. that goes yeah. along with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, and, People feel and, these things so extremely strongly. strongly, and it's, and God, for I yeah. think maybe what we're getting at, it's yes. very difficult for people. And I'm not just, maybe I am just saying this, but yeah. I think, I think the literature would probably back me up. It's very difficult for people to separate out what feels to be true and what may, in fact, be true. Exactly, and that's all I, I kind of wanted to point yeah. that out with this little experiment right. because I hear yes. so many people. You're not, I don't, this is not going to be on, okay. What's that? This is not going to be on the YouTube or anything or, uh, oh, well, oh, you can edit it. Well, it's we can fun. edit it. I'm just saying, because I don't want to talk about people you've talked about. 
because I, I, that's oh, all. Oh, I see. And, and, well, we'll and, don't talk about anybody. I'm talk, not going to talk about anything specific. You can talk specific. about a belief, but you don't talk about, don't talk about a specific person. Yeah. No, I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. What yeah. I'm saying is there, are, I hear people come on your show. Right. That's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And they believe so much, but they can't separate their belief from their sensation of that belief. In other words, yeah. but I've always felt this way. Yeah. And they may say, well, no, I haven't considered Muslim or Islam because. It feels true to me. It feels so true to me. And I think, well, a street epistemologist is like, well, let me separate that. And and, yeah. and I hear you do that. And I think that's really important. Well, thank you for <laughs> yeah, saying that. That's that's a service. I think you need yeah. to start practicing street epistemology. But I think, <laughs> Deanna, I think, and I'm not, well, when you retire. I am not kidding. <laughs> there are, there's a growing community of us. Yeah. But there need, goodness, there needs to be 20 hundred thousand times more of us who do yes. this yeah. and not just people who yes. put out content but just people who do this in just normal conversations and i think you'd be really good at it yeah well you and you're you, a you, fantastic well you you have you <laughs> talk better than i do i mean really you, you're you, you that's just toastmasters <laughs> that's toastmasters right no but you you, you explain your thoughts better yeah. than i can and i'm not yeah. terribly good at that sometimes and i think you'd really be a good one so i think um i please consider it I will. I will. We could talk about a different belief if you wanted to. Yeah. Because yeah, and we can. You know, we, we can, can talk about religion. I'm free to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. And how I feel the way I feel, and it's. I don't think you've had on someone who's, really, atheist or agnostic or I don't know. But I have. You have. I have atheist? been on my podcast. Not. Not okay. Not on. Yeah. But I've only been doing the YouTube stuff, okay. five months or something. Yeah. And so. Um, but I do. You do. Okay. I, 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 I need to I'll find talk those. And, and I, I, I will talk see. with anybody. Yeah, I know good. you could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it yeah, does. Very good. At that. Street epistemology <clears throat> is it can be used to address any claim someone has to say about the world. Yes. And so I really it doesn't make a difference to me, but, and yeah. I wouldn't be doing it well if I only took on certain claims. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I just feel like this is so needed right now because we have become so mired in our, our, our core beliefs and our sensations that we can't listen to the other side. And street epistemology is a way to do that. Wow. But it really is. And I think, but how do we make people listen to these podcasts or you're not so smart podcasts? Because if anything, we're becoming more entrenched yeah. on either side. And, and, you know, the point, I think the author of that book made was like, everybody thinks, oh, if you just knew the facts, yeah. then you would agree with me. And well, that's not true. You yeah. can, I mean, unfortunately, it it's it not hasn't, true. It hasn't worked so far. Yeah. And I think about your... people the facts doesn't seem to do no, much. But, no, but, but yeah. I listened to those people at yeah. the protest that you talked to. Oh, yeah. And I thought... Yeah. Just the way they express their feeling, I thought it doesn't matter if I went to them with a sheet or numerous scientific studies. Yeah, it wouldn't change their mind. And I think because, you bring up a good point, and yeah. you know, and and what they say may be true. You know, just to clarify, what you know, they are talking to people. You're, right. you're referring to the, the videos that you yes. can find that I talk to anti-vax Anti-vaxxers people at a protest, yeah. and their views may be, in fact, true and real, and. But I think maybe your point is is that they feel it so strongly, and it could be a feeling more than based on what is something based on what corresponds to our reality. Right, right, right. And and oftentimes when the feeling, my, the way I look at it, when the feeling comes so strongly, the sense yes. is that if it wasn't true it makes it a lot harder to figure that out for yourself yes, exactly you can't get exactly. there and and then sometimes i wonder you know if it's is it useful having these kinds of beliefs that you couldn't get there if you needed to get there yeah. yeah yeah and and um and then you could debate someone on the facts i suppose but that doesn't really address the feeling aspect, that feeling that comes in there. Yeah, the feeling, yeah. and it yeah. doesn't, and it doesn't really also address, in my mind, how someone goes about the epistemology, how someone goes about forming beliefs. Because even if you could present somebody with these facts, and let's say you did change their mind, yeah. if someone has the kind of epistemology that sets them up to form these sorts of beliefs based on this sort of way that may not be reliable, 
it would appear to me that eventually they're going to find themselves in a similar position, but in the, with a different belief. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And not to say that I have all the answers, because I'm sure none of us my do, epistemology right? yeah. can be way off on a bunch of stuff. But and, you <laughs> are human too, so you bring in your feelings, your sensations. We all bring yeah, that in. I try, and I try to do it to yeah, myself. You, but you, yeah, yeah. I try to treat epistemology. Yeah. Well, I don't know what term to use there, but should yeah. epistemologize myself. <laughs> and, um, but no, you, can, you yeah. do a good job because you don't ever let your feelings come into it. And I think you made a good point. I, my goal is not for you to know how I feel about your belief, it's for you to tell me how yeah. you came to this belief. Yeah, and I try yeah. to see this as a journey we go on together. Yeah. It's a collaboration that we're going on our journey with your belief. Yeah. And I'm trying yeah. to understand your epistemology yeah. and address epistemological issues if they need to be addressed with you. And, um, yeah, and hopefully, and I, and I fail at that sometimes, miserably, but I do tr strive to do that. Yeah. And, um, well, maybe on our next talk, I really would like to... <laughs> I think you really get it. I really do. So I'd really like I you to... I only get it because of you. It's like... Well, I mean, you know... I mean, I had read that book. You're no not reason so for you not to do it. There's no reason for you not to yeah. be to practice it. No, too. there's no reason for anybody yeah. not to practice it. Yeah. I think it would be a good exercise for us. And I just yeah. think that it's important. It's very important for people to state their beliefs and how they came about that belief. And yeah. I don't know if you're changing anyone, not that that's your goal, but maybe if somebody could just have... I think when you ask people, I think most people don't want to have false beliefs. At least that's what they say. That's what they say, yeah. And maybe yeah. they don't but they may also really think that through. I don't know. know. Yeah, they may say, and that's why I don't have false beliefs, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I don't. Yeah, and they may, right. Yeah. And then... But then I say, how important is it for you to believe in true things? Yeah. And if they say, it's way up there, yeah. well, then they're telling me, I think, that if it's not true, they'd want to know it. Right. What do you think? I think it's hard. I think self-introspection is hard to come by these days. Yeah. And street epistemologists can help us with that. I think think that if we can get people moving in that direction where they don't want to believe something that's not true and yeah. they and they will tell you that you know what I'm willing to listen to the other side I will <clears throat> because I may have confirmation bias yeah and I think that's where we should we all have these biases we all have biases and then when we talk about but I think there's too much confirmation bias going on yeah. right now and that is and, seems to and be so, quite a bit and so yes if you can get someone to state what you just said Wow, that's that's how we can heal. Yeah. Well, I was thinking um, your Mentos, I know you have them there, but I was thinking like uh, just an example that came to me. Let's say 20 years ago, you had a pack of gum. Yeah. And you asked someone, how many sticks are in this pack of gum? What would they have said? Or how, 20, how 30 years ago. 30 years ago? Let's say 30 years ago. How many sticks? Yeah, somebody gives, holds up a pack of gum, and they say to you, how many sticks? I don't know. I don't know how many sticks are in a pack of gum. Five. Oh. There were always five. Well, I have no idea. Okay, you remember the juicy fruit and the, oh, all okay. those? Yeah, the yeah. They were always five. Really? Okay. I guess I've never been a big coach. Okay, well, that, but I think about it, how today, yeah. if you held up a pack of gum, people would say, well, you'd have to look at the count. They wouldn't have five because they didn't grow up with that experience. Yeah. I grew up with the experience, packs of gum, always had five sticks. So, so what's your understanding of why we do that, of why we do yeah. this, why we do the Mentos thing? What's, what's your understanding of why this happens? I you think say? what you're trying to do is get people to state, if it's okay to believe anything is true, or is it better to believe in a more scientific way to actually determine the number. Because you asked this to somebody, and I don't remember who it was, but they said, well, I can feel there are an odd number, yeah. and that would be correct. That's one I could reason feel it's an even number, and I would be correct. But then I told you, we'll take them out and count them. But then I took that a little further, and I said, well, what if I took them out and counted them, and you said to me, Deanna, no, 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 you're, you're not counting correctly. 
Yeah. You're counting on the, the way you were raised. You're counting. You have to start with two. Yeah. And then go three, four, five. Yeah. Or whatever. I'm just saying. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And you bring up some excellent points. And, and, and very good. And there, so, yeah, I think it gets at a lot. I mean, what I love about this, this little example of the Mentos or whatever, yeah. Tic Tacs, whatever, is that it addresses a whole host of things. Right. It addresses. Like the flowers. The, the fl- yeah. Yes, like the flowers. flowers. It addresses objective versus subjective and, yes. and how people see the world. And, and when someone is, like you said, they feel that it's true and it's yes. true for them, well, then you're having a very different kind of conversation at that point. Right. Because exactly. why are you talking about someone's, why are you talking about almost anything? Because they, if you can feel it to be true and that is true, then it kind of gets you, you really can't go further, too much further than that until that is really addressed, in my mind at least. No, I get it. The example's yeah. perfect because then you find out about someone if they can if they can tell you, well, I can feel anything, then you know where the conversation's going to go. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. and also if you can't, if two people are just having a conversation yeah. and they can't even agree yes. on whether they're an even or odd number of yeah, they'd, Mentos, they'd, Mentos they'd, in a box, I mean, we can't even agree on, <laughs> on that. Yeah. That's straight. I can't think of something that is more straightforward. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then it's, I think it, first of all, it typifies where we are in the world. Like, exactly. gosh, we can't exactly. even agree on that. Exactly. And then, and, and it kind of, shows you how we can easily get from that point, get to vaccines will kill you yes. versus cat vaccines or something that yes, exactly. overall save your life or are right. helpful. Yeah. And let's say there, there's a protest for pro vaccines. And I think there was one person who showed up for <laughs> pro. I know her very well. You might too, but um, let's say that an, anti-vaxxer came over with a whole list of facts and said, you know, you shouldn't believe in, in vaccines, and here's my reasons why. Yeah. They're not going to change that person's mind any more than that person if they went to the other side and said, here are my facts. You just need the facts. And that's what scares me about today. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Because I think... we just have taken facts out of it in yes. so many ways. Vaccines could be... A deadly thing. Yeah, it could be a chip. It, it could, could be. Could be. Yeah. And the mark if that is a true belief, I would yeah. sincerely like to know it. Yeah. And that is why you could use street epistemology for someone who is pro, extremely pro-vax. You could use. There is absolutely no reason why you couldn't use street epistemology for that person as yeah. well. There is no well, I thought it was great you went out there. I just thought it was awesome. To, and to I thought it was really, a huge learning experience. Yeah. And I made assumptions of people. I thought, I don't know why I thought this, but everyone out there are probably who are believing this or believing it for this, probably similar reasons. And they didn't. They had very similar, I'm sorry, they had very different epistemologies about it. Yeah. And that surprised me. Yeah. And I just, because maybe I'm just, I was using stereotypes, and I was kind of lumping everyone in kind of in the same boat about You're it. right. They were all different. They were all different. One person said FDA approval was important, and another person said that wouldn't matter to me. And mm-hmm. and I thought it was just interesting. Uh, was one this. person said that vaccines will kill you. Yes. And basically, that's where I am. Yeah. And like, okay. And that was much nuance <laughs> in that position yeah. and, that, and how they came across it. Yeah. But all the other end, there was, um, uh, and, and he was a very nice gentleman, not to talk disparaging or anything like that. Yeah. And then there, on the other end, there was, um, I thought it was a really cool conversation with Mary who really wanted to, she really had thought it through. Yeah. It, it seemed to me and she yeah. had, I mean, I might not agree with her epistemology, but I, I see her epistemology. I get it. And I see where she's coming from and I see how she's weighing the risks and benefits. And I, I'm, I'm seeing she's able to lay out her thought process in a way that was cool because I could really see where she was yeah. coming from. And I get it. And to, I, I, I get it to the extent where I would, I would come on board with her if <laughs> I needed to. Yeah. You know? And so um, 
And that's that's what I think is cool. So I, it is very well, cool. Maybe we'll meet we'll meet, we'll meet again. I like that. And we'll, uh, we do different subject, and, uh, or, different subject, or I mean, there's lots of maybe, things that and, define all of us. Well, maybe you and I will uh, <laughs> we'll do what other street epistemologists do. We'll head out to a park and we'll practice. There you go. I'd love that. Yeah. I love that. In the yeah, meantime, the two of us can just go out and get more opinions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and then there's also uh, there's a Discord. There's something called the Discord server. If you yeah. do, if you are, I'm if you would like, Discords. yeah, yeah. And there's just like. I like that place because there's a there's a whole street epistemology community. There are people practice with they street they practice street epistemology with each other. And there's yeah. like right now there's like seven thousand people who joined, and should be many more. And um, and it's a good way to practice that way too. But we'll, we'll maybe we'll we'll either talk about stuff we've talked about today, or we'll talk about something new, and we'll we'll see where this goes. Good. Yeah. 